Today on Thai Caliente, we're making authentic Pad Thai. Hi there, I'm Renee Fuentes and welcome back to my channel, Thai Caliente. Today I'm going to be sharing a recipe for authentic Pad Thai. So Pad Thai is a popular dish here in the States as well as in Thailand. I also feel like if you've never had Thai food, it's one of those introductory dishes that most people tend to try first. Um, it doesn't have um, any you know, strong taste to it, but it is going to have notes of sweetness, sourness, and saltiness, so a trifecta of flavors. So I'm going to be showing you guys how to make your own authentic Pad Thai sauce. Um, there's you know, different variations that a lot of cooks use. Um, this is the version that my mom taught me, and she's from Thailand. Um, but whatever you do, please do not use ketchup in your Pad Thai sauce. That's definitely a westernized thing, and um, it just doesn't belong in there. So I'm going to go ahead and go over all the ingredients so you guys um, know what to use, as well as some substitutions. We're gonna start off by making the Pad Thai sauce. So I have a quarter cup of water that I've warmed in the microwave, and I'm gonna be adding two tablespoons of coconut palm sugar. So traditionally in Thailand, they use kind of a hardened um, palm sugar disc, but since um, this coconut sugar you can pretty much find anywhere at any grocery store, I'm using this instead. And go ahead and give it a good stir so that way the sugar dissolves into the water. The next is the most important ingredient, and that is tamarind. So I'm using this puree, which I was able to find at my local Sprouts, um, but the original recipe I used tamarind concentrate, which I learned is different, um, and that I found at the Asian store. So if you're using a puree, only use one tablespoon. If you're using the concentrate, use two. The next ingredient is fish sauce. So I'm using two teaspoons of fish sauce for one serving. If um, you don't like a strong taste of fish sauce, then start off with one. If you really don't like fish sauce, then you can substitute soy sauce, but it's not gonna be the same. So go ahead and give that a good sir stir and just give it a taste. It should have sweetness, saltiness, and sourness. So in order to make pad thai, we are gonna need some pad thai rice noodles. These are fresh noodles, they're also gluten-free. These are found in the refrigerated section at an Asian grocery store. If you are using dried rice noodles, then you will need to soak them prior to starting this process. Here I have a block of extra firm tofu that I have wrapped in a kitchen towel to remove some of the extra moisture. That way when we do fry the tofu, it's nice and crispy. And then I'm gonna be using shrimp as well for my other protein. I've just peeled it and left the tails on. You can remove them if you like. If you don't wanna use shrimp or tofu, you can do pretty much any protein, chicken, pork, beef. And then we're gonna be adding some fresh bean sprouts that I also found at my local grocery store as well as some green onions. These are from my garden. And then I have some chopped roasted peanuts as well as some red chili flakes for a little bit of spice. So to prepare the tofu, I'm just gonna be using about a quarter of the block and I'm cutting it into even cubes. So that way when we fry it up, it fries nice and even. Like I mentioned, if you don't wanna use tofu, then at this point you would just slice um, whatever protein you choose, chicken, pork, or beef. So I have a non-stick skillet with um, some vegetable oil just enough to cover the bottom of the pan and I'm just going to separate the tofu a little bit and just let it fry on each side until it gets nice and golden. So you can see here the tofu is already nice and golden so I'm going to go ahead and remove it from the pan as well as a little bit of the oil. Um, I do want about two tablespoons of oil left in the pan and once you remove the tofu go ahead and season it with a little bit of salt. So now I'm gonna add my shrimp into the same pan and go ahead and cook it thoroughly. It's just about a minute on each side. Once it starts to turn pink, go ahead and flip it over. Um, we are gonna put this back in the pad thai once it's done, so try not to overcook the shrimp. Go ahead and remove it once it looks nice and pink and orange. And now we're ready to make the pad thai. So I'm using my garlic press. If you don't have one, highly recommend it. So much easier. And I have one clove of garlic that I'm just going to saute very quickly because I don't want it to burn. 
And then we're gonna add in the fresh rice noodles. So I already portioned out four ounces. Um, this is a pretty good size portion. Um, one person can eat it um, or you can split it between two people. And I wanted some spice, so I'm adding some red pepper flakes into the prepared pad thai sauce that we made earlier. This looks like a lot of liquid, but um, we need the liquid because the noodles are gonna absorb it. Um, I also have the heat on about medium high, so as you can see, it, the, the skillet is pretty hot. Um, it does look dark, but the color is gonna change here in a little bit. I'm gonna crack an egg and just let it set for um, just a couple minutes and then I'll kind of break up the yolk. Once the egg kind of sets in a little bit, go ahead and scramble it up and then place the noodles on top and mix everything to incorporate it. As you can see, most of the liquid has already been absorbed into the noodles. Um, at this point, you do want to taste it to make sure the noodles aren't too dry. If they are dry, you will need to add a little bit more water, which you'll see I'll do later. Um, and then I'm adding the tofu, the fried tofu, back in along with half of the bean sprouts and half of the green onions. I'll save a little bit more for garnish at the end. And then the shrimp that we cooked, go ahead and put that back in so it can warm up especially if it's been a little bit while since from when you initially cooked the shrimp. As you see here, I'm tasting the noodles and they were a little dry, so I'm just adding about um, two tablespoons of water and you can see it just kind of brings everything back to life. So at this point, our pad thai is done. I am gonna go ahead and plate it and pad thai is best eaten right away. Um, the longer the noodles sit, they will kind of um, form together as they cool down so it's really a dish that you want to just serve right away so I'm putting all the noodles on the bottom and then I'll garnish it with some of the shrimp and then some extra bean sprouts and onions as well as a squeeze of lime the lime just kind of brings out a little bit of brightness to the pad thai and as well as some chopped peanuts All right, friends, so there you have it. Authentic shrimp and tofu pad thai for the ultimate taste test. So it hits that notes of sourness, saltiness, sweetness. You can also serve it with extra sides of like granulated sugar or fish sauce. And of course, a squeeze of lime on top. Um, just because everyone has different preferences, that's actually how they serve it in Thailand with those extra condiments. The shrimp is perfectly cooked. Nice juicy pink shrimp. Mm. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe for authentic pad thai. And if you are not subscribed to my channel, be sure to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.